friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Going to uh, put together a bunch of little snippets on the mandolin build. I haven't turned the camera on as much, uh, partly because a lot of what I'm doing is really boring. This finished detail work is just finished detail work. You just clean up things, you fix little things, and I've got, uh, I'm sure, quite a bit of uh, footage, but uh, we're going to condense it down as, as short as we can today, And uh, but it just, it'll show you how I got the mandolin to the point at which it is. And here is that point. First of all, you can see I've got the peg head inlay pretty much done, and I built a different new fretboard for it. Yes, I know, I put a video out on that other fretboard, and one of the astute viewers instantly noticed that I drilled a hole in the wrong place. The 15th fret should have had a hole, it didn't. It had it in the 14th fret on that other fretboard. Hey, I'm human, I make mistakes, it's just that way. But I gotta be honest, that wasn't the main reason I built a new fretboard. Um, I wasn't happy with a number of things about the other fretboard. I, the other dots were so big, I thought they looked out of place on the mandolin. And I'm building a high-end mandolin, I want it to look good. So we took the big, you know, I put the smaller dots in this fretboard. I also got the binding a hair wide and the fretboard a hair narrow compared to what I was really going for. And I mean just a little bit. But because of that, because of the dot, and because I didn't like all of the large dots, I made a new one. So, and I didn't film it at all, I just did it, and you can see that I did a little extra for the customer there. He wanted a cross in there, and by gosh, we put one in there. So that, we took care of the fretboard. Um, I've gone, I've made the binding slots around here. I put on the body point protectors, or these point protectors here. Um, you know, I haven't done too much other than that. I've worked on the uh, frets, or the uh, truss rod slot here. I've worked a little bit on the truss rod, but not very much yet. I'm going to make probably my own truss rod for this. I've made this piece here that is the fretboard extension, it, although it is still in rough form. I don't have it. And then this all has to be uh, dished out right through here on these, little, on these little knobs here. That all has to be cleaned up. So anyway, we're, we're making progress. Uh, it takes a lot of time on this detail stuff. So to me, that's where all the work is, is in the detail. Just before we get into the video, I want to read you a couple of just nice notes that I got from uh, two uh, subscribers. And um, I get a lot of nice notes. I don't know why I just picked these two, but I did. Uh, Glenn Allen wrote that, uh, Hi Jerry, just a few words to tell you how much I enjoy your straightforward, no BS way of showing how you go about repair of these instruments. And I love your honesty. To me, honesty is very important, so I'm glad that shows through. Brick Spieth, or Spieth, I'm not sure how you say that, or uh, pronounce it. Uh, S-P-I-E-T-H is the last name. He says, Howdy, Jerry. I've been watching your YouTube videos, and I thought I'd just send you my thanks for all that I've learned. First, it was your mandolin setup videos that emboldened me to buy a Michael Kelly mandolin, on a blowout special. The action was awful, but I got the frets leveled and the action set, and now it plays real well. He goes on to just say that, uh, you know, it inspired him to try a bunch of other things, and uh, anyway, so uh, he says he, it boosts his confidence when he can see something done, and uh, he's not afraid to try it himself. Well, and I get a lot of notes from a lot of people that way, and I thank you all for watching. I, I really appreciate it, and you know, on a percentage basis, 98% of my feedback is all very, very good. You will always have somebody that's got to find something wrong with anything you do. It doesn't matter what it is. And that's okay. I mean, I, you know, I, I, let me just make one more point, and I've made it before. Everything I do and show on here is how I do it. I'm not saying it's how you should do it. It's how I do it. Period. It's just that simple. I'm not... You know, I, I know that people are going to think that's the way to do it, and they're going to do it that way. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that either. But, you know, there are many, many, many ways to skin a cat. And uh, so, you know, I just pick the way I do it, and that's what I show. 
and uh, you know I hope it's coming across that way that I'm not necessarily saying this is how you have to do it it's not that's not the way it is let's get into the videos thanks for watching make welcome Don Brown in the Ozark Mountain Trio how about it Now that I've got this uh, cross inlaid in here, I'm going to saw through where it crosses the frets. problem with this pearl is is that it doesn't uh, give like the wood does so I'm gonna have to somehow widen that slot right where the pearl is a little bit so that when I drive the fret in it doesn't chip it and break it that's what it looks like anytime an inlay crosses a fret I always find it better to put the inlay in let it just cross the frets and then saw through the frets later it it keeps your design in line better and um, you know it just makes a better job a neater job the, the only negative is that like I said where this uh, cross is right here um, and that's a hard to say where the cross crosses the frets you uh, need to widen it ever so slightly there because when you drive the fret wire in there it'll be wider and it and this pearl does not give so you need to uh, allow for that by just making it slightly wider in that in those areas I'm going to put on my viewer and my face mask and I'm going to cut these slots wider right where the cross goes across the frets Got my Uncle Don Brown and the Ozark Mountain Trio playing in the background there. Hope that's not too distracting. Never tried that before while I'm talking. Got my printout here of the inlay that I do in the peg head. Not gonna film every aspect of this inlay job, but I'm gonna show a few highlights. So what I do is I basically cut this out and glue it onto the shell, which is what I'm gonna do right now. I picked out a piece of pearl for the rose that has a lot of figure in it and I think that'll make the rose look kind of neat. It's got a lot of stippling in it if it, it's what it looks like, it's what I would call that. And I'm just going to try to place it where I think it'll look the best. Looks pretty good right there. I also try to place it so I don't waste any extra pearl. I think that'll look good right in there so that's where we'll glue it. What I do is just glue it on with Elmer's glue stick. It uh, holds it pretty well, though I gotta say uh, sometimes these glue sticks turn loose. Now this is the first time I've used this Elmer's glue stick. I've been pretty happy with it on packages, so I think it might work better on this. So that's what I'm using. Looks like I'll have enough room there to get the word V for the Rosa glued into the same piece of pearl. I've got my setup here. I've got an aquarium pump that uh, is blowing through these little hoses that just puffs just enough air to keep the dust off of here where I can see what I'm doing. I've got my dust mask 
got the piece of pearl here and a very fine blade saw. You can see the blade there barely, but it is a fine, fine blade. So here we go. again love you've asked me to take you back once more you say you need a helping hand here but that's what you told me once before walk softly on this heart of mine love don't treat Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got after we're through cutting it out. I've got it laying here on the peg head, of course. It's not glued down or anything. It's all movable. And uh, you can see all the detail that was cut out. And I used to cut out all of the detail inside of these letters. See where all this white is? I used to cut all that white out and all the white out in here, like there's a little area here and a little area here and even in this area here. And I learned after a long time, I didn't learn this quickly, i got to be honest, that it's much better to just leave those areas like that and then cut them out later after you get them glued into the peg head. And the way I cut them out later is I take a little Dremel tool with a very, very tiny little round bit and reach in there and just cut all this out by hand. And it's much better, it does a much better job, it looks better, and you don't break near as many pieces, and it's much, much faster. Uh, so it's just a win-win all the way around. Give you another tip, and that is that this stick is invaluable. Uh, when you're sawing this pearl out, you hold down on it like so, and you saw, and holding it down keeps it from breaking. If you don't have a lot of pressure on it, it will raise up as you're going up on your upstroke, and it will crack the pearl. So you have to have something, some good way of holding it down, and I use this little stick. I, that works great. I'm able to put a lot of pressure on it. So the next step is to uh, route out the area that we need and uh, put these pieces in.
have the camera on when I started that, but basically I've already glued the inlay in place down in this slot. And then I was just taking that really tiny drill bit and trying to cut in the detail. I'm not sure how successful I was there on this. We're gonna get the sander out, sand this level, and then go from there. got some of the detail penciled in there don't know how much of that you can see but uh, anyway it's and it depends on the light you're looking at it because it reflects but I've got with just plain old pencil in there and I've got the tiniest little drill the tiniest little cutter on the end of that I mean it is so tiny and so we're gonna get in there and work on this I'll have a mask on Just a little thought before I'm going far away. Yes, I'll be waiting on that hill side when the day is at your call. On the sunny side of the mountain for the rippling Get me, little darling, though I love a thirsty dawn. Well, there's where we're at for now. I'm going to go ahead and fill that and dye it and just see what that looks like before I try to put in the petal detail and the leaf detail. Grow on the sunny side of the mountain where the rippling water petal detail drawn in and now I will trace that with the Dremel tool also for to engrave that and then that way we'll fill all these engravings with uh, a filler and then dye them black and then they'll show up. Or is it true? Have you found somebody new? 